Angular has a bit of a reputation for having a steep learning curve, and it is generally seen as the framework for large enterprise style applications, not for young hip startups creating the first decentralized Web5 coffee subscription service. But Angular has been making big changes lately that improve developer experience and simplify the mental model for Angular applications. So take a look at this. This is what a freshly generated Angular application has typically looked like over the years. For experienced Angular developers, this probably looks fine, but to newcomers trying to evaluate if Angular might be for them, maybe not so much. That's a lot of files to render a single component in an application. So now let's take a look at what a more modern Angular application could look like. So this is the exact same thing except we have a grand total of one file to render out our root component. We can define the template using standard HTML combined with Angular's special syntax for doing things like conditionals and loops. And the logic for this component goes in the class for the component. Now, let's say we wanted to create a new component for this application. So I've created a hello component here that just renders a message that says hello there. So previously in Angular, if we wanted to use this component, we would need to declare the component inside of a module and then import that module into the module for the component that we want to use it in. Again, for experienced Angular developers, this is something that becomes second nature, but for newcomers, you would probably be left thinking, why? Why can't I just import this component directly where I want to use it and just use it? Well, that's exactly what we can do now with standalone components in Angular. If I want to use this component, I can now just use it in whatever component I like. All I need to do is just add the selector for that component in the template. Uh, for this one, it's app hello. And then thanks to the Angular language service, I can auto import that component from wherever it exists in the application. So this will import the component for us. And it also adds it to the imports for this component. So you can do all of this manually if you want. It's just a lot easier to have uh, the language service do it for you. So now if I save this, we are going to see uh, it changed to say hello there, which was the content of the hello component. Okay, so I think this makes a bare bones hello world style application way easier to understand. If you've used any other JS frameworks, uh, all of this likely will look reasonably normal and intuitive. There's just a bit of spicy Angular specific syntax thrown into the mix, but that's the case with most frameworks. But let's see what a slightly more realistic application might look like so we can build up a bit more of a mental model of how Angular applications work. So what we are looking at now is a simple notice board application. We can go to this uh, create page here to add a new notice. I'll click submit, that's going to add the notice and now we can view it on the main dashboard page. So an important difference with this application is that we have route based navigation now. We have a header and a footer that stays consistent, but going to different routes will show different components. And also since we are trying to be cool, we are using Tailwind for styling, but that isn't required. So let's get a sense of what the code for this more realistic application looks like. So we still have our root component, which is what we're looking at now. But now in the template, we just have this router outlet. And this allows us to associate particular components with particular URLs and display them wherever this router outlet is. So we want to have our header and our footer components displayed on every page. Uh, we could do that just by adding those above and below this router outlet in the template. But I think it's a nice pattern to have a dedicated feature for controlling the layout which is why I have this layout folder. So we have this layout component here. In the layout component, we have basically what we could have just had in the root component. We have our router outlet, and that is sandwiched by our header and footer components. So by default in our main.ts file, the application will route to this layout component by default. And then the layout component defines its own set of routes that we use to route to the rest of the application. So you can see we have a route set up for the dashboard and the create page here, and they load their respective components. And for the header and footer components, I've separated them out into this separate UI folder. Again, this isn't completely necessary. I just find it a nice pattern to have the main uh, feature component and then additional dumb or presentational components separated into their own folder within that feature. 
But you can see here, these are both reasonably simple components. This is just a footer with some tailwind styling. Uh, same for the header. There's a bit more going on here and we have some uh, links as well. So the layout gives our application its overall structure and a way to route to our two features, dashboard, which will display our notices and create, which will allow us to add new notices. And the dashboard feature follows a similar format. We have our main feature component, which is essentially the routed page component. So this is what we are seeing when we are on the dashboard page. And then on this page, I have an additional UI component for displaying the notices list. And again, that can be found inside of the UI folder for this feature. And this component here is what is being displayed to render out these notices. Now our dashboard feature needs to get this notices data somehow. So this is where injectable services come into play in Angular. So you can see in the constructor here, we are injecting a notices service. And from that notices service, we are pulling out an observable stream called notices. And that is what we are supplying as input to this notices list. So this service is defined in the shared folder. So again, this is not an Angular specific concept. This is just a pattern I like. So things that are shared among multiple features in the application go in the shared folder. So in this case, our notices service lives in the data access folder. Again, this folder naming structure is just a pattern I like, it's not required. And decorating this class with injectable is what allows us to inject it into our components. So providing it in root means any component anywhere in the application will share a single instance of this service. And that makes it a great place to keep shared state and logic like our notices observable here and also the method for adding new notices. So we can add some notices on one component and then that data is going to be available to us through another component like our dashboard. Okay, so if we switch to our other routed component, the uh, create component, we will again see mostly the same structure, our main feature component and a presentational UI component in the UI folder. So in this case, our UI component that we've created is the form uh, for adding the new notice. Again, this is a pretty standard form uh, just with some tailwind styling. But on top of that, we also use the reactive forms module from Angular. So I'm not going to get into that in this video, but it provides a powerful way to create and manage forms and it's available in Angular by default. So all of this results in this lovely little application we see on screen now. Now, obviously I've skipped quickly through a lot of things here, although I've shown you the nuts and bolts of how this was all put together, there are still some Angular concepts to learn that I haven't explained thoroughly. My main goal here was to give you a general sense of what building a real application with Angular might look like. And I hope this can help demonstrate that the learning curve of Angular today might not be as steep as its reputation would have you believe. So what do you think? Can Angular be cool again? I can't ever see Angular being the hype framework of the day. Uh, it's not doing anything novel or fundamentally different anymore. It's just a really solid framework for getting the job done that is being constantly and incrementally improved. So while I don't think there is going to be much hype around Angular, uh, here's what I think Angular has going for it that might actually start attracting some newcomers. So it has a reasonably simple mental model, especially now that standalone components have been introduced. It's very standardized and opinionated. Uh, generally everything you need is built in and available by default. And there are well-established patterns for a lot of things. There is never going to be complete community consensus on everything, but you'll generally find that if you know Angular, you can find your way around just about any Angular code base. They are all very similar. It's a mature framework and has been around for a long time. So there is a strong community and a lot of community resources and tutorials. And it has a really solid development team. It's powered by Google engineers. And I know Google killing projects is a bit of a meme at this point, but Angular has been around for a long time and it's used internally by Google, I think for thousands of applications. So it's almost certain to continue being a priority for them. So let me know what you think. If you use Angular, can you see it growing in popularity more? And if you've never used Angular, does it look appealing to you? And if you've stopped developing with Angular in the past, do any of these recent improvements tempt you to come back? 
So whether you're on the Angular train or not, I hope you got something out of this video. Uh, if you did, consider leaving a like or subscribe before you go, and I hope to see you again for the next video.